My Love of Life Energy is a podcast created by Anna Scott. Anna knows that every human being sees life uniquely. In this podcast, she will talk to people and learn from them. These conversations are to shine the brilliance of each human being she speaks to. Join her. After each exploration, you will expand on your insights and see truth and beauty. Good morning and good afternoon, and welcome to my podcast, My Love of Life Energy. And this is a series on the story of the muses. And today i am got the great honor of getting to know and speaking with Linda Pritchard, who is one of the authors in the book. So welcome, Linda. Thanks, Anna. Happy to be here. We, we've been... Um, our intent has been trying to do this recording for the last two times. It gets rescheduled and we've just been sitting here talking and I don't know, <laughs> Linda, and I just said, I have a girl crush and <laughs> you have such a, um, an energy of lightness to you and playfulness. Oh, that's so interesting. That's such interesting feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, I mean, it, 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 you seem very playful. Is that a true I story? I, I truly, yeah. Truly, I am, except when I'm not. <laughs> and I don't, would you know that from my writing? We've been in writing class, character class together. Yeah, I mean, the character class is the only one. And no, but I, you had a, I'll never forget, you wrote this piece about the woman at the airport and hiding something. <laughs> I was fascinated by you. I was like, who writes that? that's yeah that was based on a true story of course you know expanded upon <laughs> through creative genius coming through the moment you know through writing class but um but yeah I remember you said something to me and I don't know if it was that piece or if it was something else but it was the first time we were in class together and I read and you said we're not in Kansas anymore <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, I love this woman. <laughs> oh, good. So it's a mutual. <laughs> it's a mutual, yes. Oh, God. So, so how, um, I just found out that you went to RISD and you are a big design. I know that you're in design. I've looked you up enough that you've been in design. Shoes, you've done something magical shoes, with yeah. shoes and other areas. But how, how is writing and creativity the same thing for you? Ah, okay. Writing and creativity. Um, yeah, I think writing is creativity expressed in mm. one form versus another kind of form like painting. When I went to RISD, I graduated in, in painting and I did that for a few years. Um, but to make ends meet, I got involved in um, the area of visual merchandising and that led to merchandising and it kind of took me away, took me um, off to New York from Rhode Island and um, took me into a whole career there of design and product development. And so writing has come later and I didn't realize that I could be a writer until just three years ago when I started with Jules Swale's magical <laughs> classes, which is how we met and how I met these other amazing, mostly women writers. Um, and many of them you've interviewed. And I, so far I've listened to one, Maria Iliff Woods, and I can highly recommend that. And I hope to get through all of them in, in the coming weeks. But yeah, writing is just, for me, it's been a new expression of my creativity. I didn't know I could write. I mean, I could write good emails. I could write good business um, work, but I didn't know about creative writing. And mm -hmm. I wasn't really intent on becoming a writer. It's like the kind of thing that you fall into. You know, you follow a breadcrumb. It really came via voice. Voice got me to, um, to, uh, to a podcast voice got me to, uh, to get to an audio uh, book uh, gig. And then voice got me to um, method writing via Maria Wood and Jules Swales, because it was Maria who told me about these classes with Jules. 
She had just gone through the pilot and uh, it was Jules' first, uh, first full-time uh, a group of sessions. And Maria told me that its method writing was really about finding the deep voice. And I mm. thought, I have no business spending time jumping over here to learn how to write. But there was something that was calling and it was the word voice that I was on this whole trajectory of finding my own voice and using my voice. I, I, you've said that and you have me fascinated. What, what have you seen about voice? It's unique to each one of us. And it, and it speaks from a really deep place if you're willing to listen to your own. And most of us don't spend time doing that because we're too busy. And the amazing thing about, for me, my choice to listen in that moment um, has led me to, you know, uh, being a published author now among all the other people, including you in um, Stories from the Muses. I never could have imagined that. But then most things that I've done, I never could have imagined anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and what have you learned about, I, I love what you said, that it comes from a deep place and we have to listen. What have you yeah. seen about that? Because I, I, I know you coach. Yeah, I do. And I can't imagine what a gift it is to have somebody listen to their own voice. Yeah. Yeah. It is a gift. And, and um, as I said, we mostly don't pay attention because we're too busy. And when someone just takes the time, either because someone else listens to them or because they just mm. slow down to suddenly realize that they do have something to say. It's not known the way it might be or in what form it might take. I found that even though my whole training and, and my work over decades had been in the visual world, and if I was going to spend any more concentrated time, it should be in the visual area, um, painting, uh, printmaking, something like that. And then I skipped over into this new world and it's really kind of amazing. And I think about, there actually was a client, this just occurred to me, that a client told me years ago that she liked working with me because I painted with words. And I've <laughs> always remembered that. Of course I would, <laughs> right? And, um, and yeah, so there's, there's a connection, obviously, between the two. And as writers, you know, we're, we're, we're visual we're creating a visual world on a page, mm. or if it's recorded with our voices. So it's, it's all completely interconnected. And to see them more that way, I think is really helpful. I think it's been helpful for me to be a visual artist moving into the, the writing world. So I bring that along. And then just realizing that, you know, my voice is everything, everything <laughs> that you know, exists within me at any given moment, but it's drawn on an entire world of experience. And that's what I bring to the page when I, I write. And that's one of the things that I do love about writing now that I never thought that I would. Mm. Oh, wow. So how do you... Um, I know it's not a how, but it's the only way I know. How do you discern your deep voice? How do you You're know it? Asking me easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you know that. And I'm fascinated. I want to know. I'm just so curious because what you're pointing to, Linda, is so profound. And it's such a gift to humanity, to people. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see you know it. Yeah, I do. I do. And, and I'm not sure how to express it in words. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, that's a, it's, it's a mystery, you know, mm -hmm. like there are some mysteries in life 
And, and when we allow for them to live within us, I mean, I've noticed through my writing, like there are, there are these archetypal themes, there are these, there are like things that I had no idea that I, that I really thought about or um, was connected to, but I see them on the page. And over time, I've seen them pop up again and again. Well, that's, that's my voice there. It's, mm. it's, it's these things that show up again. And, um, and I, and I'm fascinated by them. I mean, I am, I think more than in working in the visual world, I've been more struck and maybe it's at this point in my life because, you know, I was, I was a purely visual artist, not a designer, but actually an artist, artist, um, more intently earlier in my life. Now, later I'm writing, so I'm drawing on everything else, but, um, but yeah, just to see what shows up on the page and the, and the, the life themes and everyone is different. You know, we've talked about this in the book too, that everyone has a unique voice. And one of the things that you really see in this book with the number of writers delving into the muses is just that, the variety, yeah. the depth, but all coming from this deeper place. Yeah, their own unique voice. Yeah. yeah. How, how was it for you to write on the muses? It wasn't easy. Um, I did it early on. The only person who'd done the muses uh, before me was Maria because mm. she was one level ahead because she'd done the pilot with Jules. So she was the only person until I, um, until I, I started writing and I did the muses by myself. So there was no one else doing them with me at the time. So it was a little lonely and um, <laughs> And I didn't have, you know, I, I got the feedback, but it wasn't from people who had previously done them. So for me, the, a really interesting thing was that each week I thought I was going to write one muse and it turned out to be someone different. Like I started with the child muse and I thought, well, okay, I've been a child, right? So I can kind of relate to that. And um and so I realized the first time I started writing the child muse, what came out was Medusa. And out of... <laughs> Surprise. I mean, maybe it tells you something about my childhood. <laughs> so, and there is, an, there is an, a piece in the book uh, called Hide and, Hide and Seek Hateful Style. And it was... It was a, a childhood story, but it was about um, about Medusa being rejected by an on the, an outsider to all of um, the the girly things of oh. a young girl's childhood, and how enraged she was and full of revenge. And oh, wow. um, yeah, so so yeah, the the muses uh, complex. Uh, you have to reach deep inside, clearly, um, full of surprises. And I think for me, I started to see more the range of my writing by doing the, the, the muse work, is that when I look at the pieces, they're, they're almost like all these different people that are have populated my world. <laughs> I, I was going to say, not the range of your writing, but the range of who you are as a human being. Well, yeah, I think that's ultimately true. Yes, it is. Yeah, it just comes out in the writing, especially when we allow ourselves. And that's amazing thing about method writing is, is the allowance, the mm -hmm. allowance and the invitation to be, to find that voice and express it on the page um, without reservation. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so curious. We had talked. So, Linda, you're also a three three principles coach, I like am. you. Yeah. And I'm curious to see how has the understanding of the three principles impacted your capacity to write. And for people who are listening, three principles. You can look it up. Sydney Banks, mind, consciousness, and thought. Um, to be more at ease, I think. To be less judgmental. 
by mm. by a lot by a lot <laughs> wow i don't know yeah. why that just impacted me yeah because you know it's true right yeah just to be to be more f- forgiving less consciousness of less conscious of a self and more willing to be more playful um, and and feel just more deeply connected to who you are without so much reservation. Do you think having the understanding of the three principles allowed you to write and go into this avenue rather than, you know, because you're, you were in such the visual world? I... I can't say for certain, except I know that there's been a profound change in how I, I experience my life. And therefore, it can't help but have to have opened up these new possibilities and new channels and new willingness to see and pursue something completely new. I mean, it was kind of like an act of faith. Before I decided to sign up for, for method writing, I thought, this is the last thing you should be doing, Linda. I mean, get with your program, right? But <laughs> I listened. And when I listened, it was just clear that this was the next thing to do. Mm. And I you, think you just, under, the principles oh. understanding really helped me to be open to that, to have more clarity and less, um, and, and be less driven by ideas I had previously about what I should be doing. So, so and I, I'm going to say something, and I don't mean it as an insult. Um, I mean, it is the highest form of a compliment. You're um, an older woman, you're like in your, you've got gray hair, I've got gray hair. So you've got some years under your belt. But what strikes me about you is your playfulness and your aliveness. There's such a life in you, like life, like when I see older people, I see a lot of like me being one of them, but I see people being beaten down by life, but that's not how I experience you is like you're rejoicing in life. Yeah, that, you know, that's true. That's true. I'm, I'm a big reinventor. Um, And, and, and it, as a coach, it's the people I work with, mostly in the creative world and um, many of them people who are moving from something more staid um, and transitioning into, into a more creative, um, pers- or more creative pursuits for their future. Uh, yeah, I feel, uh, I do feel very alive. And I thank you for really bringing that to the surface too. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's true. It's true. There's no reason not to be, I guess. I'm thinking about this in the moment. Why would one not be? There's every well, reason I, to. I mean, I've been through some very, very hard times. Um, but there's no reason not to be alive. But th- there's a feeling of, um, like people, I think that's the gift of this understanding, is that is that you have hard times, but you still know you're okay. You could still be with life. And you, you um, embody that. And that's such a gift. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it does. Um, I really appreciate that, Anna. I mean, it feels, it also feels true that um, I, I think because Uh, because I realized my own resilience, truly, Mm. that that's never left. And I realized that before I had a a three principles understanding, it led me to the three principles. It was kind of a lose everything situation. And um, and so I I feel like I know from what I speak um, that I've seen it for myself and, and I found that you can always create from where you are. And I did that. And it's something that I want to share with people too. So, um, and so that's why I feel buoyant and most of the time, not all the time, but, um, 
but yeah, it's just a place to come from. And it's the dominant place to come from. And it's helpful, even when things are tough, which they are for everyone at times. Yeah. I, I can feel that in you, that you stand in that knowing and share from that place. So as a fellow coach, what I'm really curious about, has this writing impacted how you coach or, or what you see with your clients? Um, I do think it has. It's, uh, I've been um, experiencing the, the, the range and the depth of the writing that I'm doing has done two things. One, it's helped me see, and I, I'm not sure how to describe this, but it's helped me see more into other people. It's helped me see something deeper about their creativity. It's also made me more willing to draw them forward into doing something like writing. And then secondly, mm. I've noticed that I'm attracting more writers somehow to the work that I do. Like I have this circle of creators program and I've done it a few times now and it's a, it's a six week program. And now I'm finding more writers just, I'm not looking for them. It's almost mm. like it's in the air. They're finding <laughs> me. I don't know. It's like one of those magic things that happens. Um, but yeah, I do. Uh, the, the writing has opened me in a way that I think allowed me to see other people's creativity more deeply than I did before. Hmm. And that's, and that has been a gift. Hmm. I guess what I have seen then is you're feeling your creativity in a deeper and wider way. Correct. Yes, that's it. Is that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because there was a period of time when I was uh, working as a designer and I had birth, uh, I was a shoe designer and I had my own eponymous line made in Italy, which was the crash and burn moment when that went down in 2009. And then I bootstrapped a handbag line, but I was always in the product development area, creativity focused around design products, et cetera. And now the writing, not making products anymore has been a gift in and of itself. I mean, I do love stuff and I, I, I love anything to do with design. But for me to engage now in writing, there's a freeing aspect of it. I think that's really been, uh, that's been so, uh, mm. so helpful about expanding my creativity at this point in my life. No more stuff. What? <laughs> What's so interesting is what I just felt is what you're really doing is freeing people. Yeah, I love that, Anna. Thank you. That's the, that's the coach in you, right? Well, no, well, I just felt it more, when you yeah. said it. Yeah, but that's it's to more, draw that out. Yeah. Yeah, that freedom. Yeah. Thank you. Because it is what, well, I have not articulated it all. Um, that is... I think you're, you're absolutely right. That is what I do with people. Oh, you said up front that what you do with your podcast is you draw out the light in people. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, well, you know what? So this is the reciprocity is I got to feel it for a second. Ah, okay. I got to feel it through you what it feels like to be free because that's what you're looking at that's what your intent is is to be that freedom of this energy to express the way it wants to express without the limits yeah that gives me the see chills where, really does in this moment wow well well that that those uh, a friend of mine cooper who i did a podcast with he said those are truth bumps chills are truth bumps Ah, okay, perfect. Yeah. So, um, so we are running out of time. So if you want to feel more freedom <laughs> in your life, <laughs> and explore your creativity and see the creative genius you are, Linda, how do people find you? Um, they can find me. Well, I'm, I'm a social media under Linda Pritcher, easy to find me. And my website is lindapritcher.com. Okay, it's great. very easy. There are only two of me in the United States. And one of them is not me. There you go. <laughs> Linda, it has been a true 
delight to talk to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Anna. This has been this is this has been really quite wonderful. It's exceeded my expectations by a lot. <laughs> well, it took us a while, but we got it here. It did take us a while, but we got the job done. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you.